welcome again, and I'm very pleased uh, to be here. So I'm going to talk about the global research and analysis for public health or graph network. Early on in the pandemic, during the first wave, many countries, including African countries, they were grappling on how to interpret the case counts, but also the mortality, uh, the test positivity rate, and what would be the best recommendations to give to the different countries. And this was a huge and very demanding task, it still is. And WHO therefore reached out to many consultants who could help with us. And our group at the Institute of Global Health at the University of Geneva was one of them who uh, supported WHO Afro in, in these tasks. So WHO Afro has 47 member states and, and it was really a lot of work to do all the analysis and to give recommendations. So what I did, since my team is also rather small, is that I reached out to colleagues, uh, to students, uh, to persons who work in Africa to see if they could help us with this task. And uh, one of the colleagues uh, that helped us were from the technical high schools at EPFL, ETH, the Swiss Data Science Center, and in particular also their Renku platform, which is a secure data analysis platform, which allowed us to do joint analysis across countries and across continents and to share knowledge. Then we also got help from universities. Just after me, uh, we'll have Flavio Coelho from Brazil presenting, for example. But we also have people from African universities, for example, from Malawi, from Mozambique, from Burkina Faso, uh, also from India, and people also from ministries of health, uh, from international organizations who really joined us in this uh, joint initiative. So at the end, we really had a very multidisciplinary team uh, from representing basically as 60 persons uh, from 24 countries, uh, from academia, government, and NGOs. Now, what was the work that we were carrying out? So we received individual level patient line list data that were shared by countries with WHO Afro, and then also with us to help support to do this analysis. This data had to be cleaned uh, and, and, uh, and also if, before we could do the analysis. So we created general kind of markdown scripts in R and open source software uh, to, to create eventually in several steps that I skip over here, uh, weekly and monthly reports that were then shared again with WHO Afro and the member countries. Now, what was, were the type of analysis that we performed? So, on one hand, it was simple epidemiological analysis, for example, estimation of attack rates, case fatality rates, epidemic growth rates. Uh, but we also included additional external data sources. So, for example, the Google mobility data or data from the demographic health surveys, providing more in-depth information on uh, the demographics and the behavior of persons. And this then helped us to create compound indicators and more sophisticated analysis. For example, uh, we, we created region-specific mortality and incidence kind of risk indices, and also worked on mathematical modelings uh, to predict the course of the pandemic. So what were the outputs? So on one hand, we created dashboards that you can see here on the top right. Uh, we created the reports that I was talking about. And we also created slide decks, which were sh shared with different stakeholders. So here is just an example of one of the reports. Uh, it's, it's a report from Mauritius. We created uh, reports for many different countries, but Mauritius was one of the countries which agreed that the, re that the report will be openly available. While uh, it's quite a sensitive topic and many countries uh, didn't want that the data or the reports would be shared. And at the end of each report, uh, we had a situation summary and also recommendations for actions. But it was really quite a comprehensive report, not only on the epidemiologic situation, 
but also looking at the social challenges, at the economic challenges, and each report had about 30 to 40 pages. Now, how to move from the crisis response to a more sustainable uh, response? So, um, I showed before this kind of a bit complex uh, step or, or uh, yeah, steps of, 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 uh, of work that we carried out, but it basically uh, breaks down to four usual or simple steps, which is just data collection, it's data uh, preparation, processing, doing the quantitative analysis, then interpreting the data uh, with qualitative analysts that also are, have in-depth knowledge from the countries and eventually the decision making. And for most of these steps, we had in-country experts uh, for data collection, for, for the qualitative analysis and the interpretation, of course, also the decision-making is done locally. But then for the data processing and quantitative analysis, there were mostly external experts being involved, uh, for example, our group. And this kind of uh, gaps in its skills uh, was, is, of course, uh, has been recognized a long time ago. And it was also highlighted here by WHO um, in one of their requests for proposals to which we responded to, where they really highlighted that the COVID pandemic has uh, highlighted important shortcomings in states' capacities to perform timely collection and analysis of outbreak data, that this is particularly pronounced in low-income countries, and there's a dearth of trained data analysts and a weak information management infrastructures, which often uh, limits the effect effective information flow. Now, uh, with the help of the, the, this RFP, which we eventually uh, won, we are currently working on two types of tools that we want to present here. Uh, so one of them is the graph courses, which is a uh, open courses uh, for data analysis in R, and we will have a separate presentation on that after the, the break. And the other one is a, a tool called Epigraph Hub, which is a collection of tools actually which facilitates the quick transformation and exploitation of epidemiological data from various sources. And with bringing those two, these tools together, uh, the aim is to increase the use of programmatic data science tools in health ministries uh, to provide more actionable insights, uh, which can be gained from all these data, to reduce the time from data collection uh, to the response and very important also that uh, to, to, uh, to support countries that they have great, greater autonomy to analyze their own data. And the aim is to not only improve the outbreak response, but really more generally to enhance surveillance and response in various countries around the world. So where are we at the moment? So uh, I mentioned the graph course and the epigraph hub. Uh, much of it has been done with volunteer support as well. Uh, we got this funding from WHO headquarters at the end of last year. Uh, we started to partner with the University of Oxford and we're very pleased that a lot of colleagues from Oxford are here also today. And uh, so today, we are really seeking for more partners and co-founders who could support and uh, join us on these initiatives. And with that, I'm handing over to my colleague, Flavio Coelho. Thank you very much.